All right, Patchy, uh, obviously not the outcome that you were hoping for tonight. Um, just talk me through it. I mean, what are the emotions right now after your first uh, career loss? Um, you know, just a few adjustments. Uh, you know, just uh, feel like I tried to go for the finish in the first and second. Um, I used a lot of energy, and then uh, I was rebuilding in the third. He came strong in the third. The fourth and the fifth, just like I knew he would, man. He's got good cardio, good team. Uh, no excuses on my end, man. You know, I was the best patchy mix tonight, man. I came with um, great camp, uh, even the extension, because we were supposed to fight July 24th. I had extra time, you know, no excuses. Uh, he was just better than me tonight, you know. Uh, no excuses and failure at all. And when it went to the judge's decision, did you feel like that he had pro probably edged you, or did you think that uh, you had done enough? Um, I felt like I won the first two, and then I thought maybe I could steal one. But he had more volume in those last three rounds, so I'm not surprised that uh, he got the three rounds. I think the 49-46 could have been the other way, though. 48-47, I feel, should have sufficed, you know. This is the first time as an amateur or a professional that you suffered to defeat. So do, do you feel like that this could turn into, a, you know, a good learning lesson for you that maybe you could even get better from this? I mean, yeah, every fight, man, every fight I'm going to get better. Even uh, even tonight, like, um, I don't define myself just on this one fight or uh, any of my last 13 or even the 24-fight win streak. I take one e each one at a time. So um, I'm just trying to grow, get better each time. Um, you know, I'm down right now, but I'm not out. Uh, you know, it was a hard fought fight, you know. Um, it's not like he just walked out there, walked through me, you know. Uh, I feel like some minor adjustments, maybe another takedown in there. That fight could go either way, too. So, you know, um, I don't hang my head, you know. I'm going to learn from this one as well. Uh, he worked the body a lot, and it seemed like maybe around the third round there, you slowed a little bit. Was the body shots having some effect on you? Because he would throw a lot to the body. Not so much just the body shots. I think it was me trying to force the initiations in the first and two rounds, trying to hold the back, um, use the body triangle. That takes a lot out of me, too. And uh, he was doing the right defenses. A few times I tried to go for the rear naked choke. I used a lot on my arms. And... Um, not so bouncy. My coaches were telling me more volume, more bouncy on my feet, but I feel like I was just trying to walk towards them, and I kind of got into uh, what I told them I wasn't going to do. It was like a brawl, you know. Um, once I started getting touched, I wanted to walk them down and, uh, you know, slapping them and just to leave those antics out, man, just think of my game plan. So I'm going to beat myself up for it, but I'm going to just get back in the gym and keep growing, man, getting better. Um, turning into a brawl because there was moments it almost looked like you were channeling the Diaz brothers with the hands and everything. Was he frustrating you? Were there elements of that was getting frustrating that led you into that brawl kind of strategy that you what, didn't want to get into? No, just uh, not so much just him. It was more uh, it was more me pushing it. I could have been more methodical, I think, you know. Could have used better angles and uh, not just try to walk him down so much. But uh, I wanted to pressure him. I wanted to go out there and finish him, you know. I wanted to... Uh, you know, continue what I've done, you know, what's worked for me. So I was trying to pressure him. Um, once I started getting touched, you know, just wanted to hurt him back, you know, as opposed to think methodically, you know. A few more, a few minor changes, I feel I could make some good adjustments there. And you said like minor changes in the future in terms of more takedowns. Was he hard to get an angle on for takedowns because of his constant movement? The fact that he didn't really slow down, was that difficult in trying to get a grasp on him? No, like I said, man, I took him down in the first two rounds. It was just more me expending a lot of energy in those two rounds to try and finish. I feel like my coach is telling me the right things. I could have just stayed on his hands and uh, stayed on the back, but I was trying to hunt the rear naked choke so much that I'm using a lot of my energy, you know what I mean? I could have just won those rounds and kept position. Normally in the gym, I think more position, but out there I was thinking finish, 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 you know? Because it's worked so well for me too, you know what I mean? I finish almost everybody in that position in the gym as well, so... But, you know, much respect to him. He was uh, well-trained for those positions. So it wasn't that I was doing things wrong. It was just I think that maybe he was doing um, multiple things right, you know, more credit to him. I'm just curious, you know, um, have you suffered any injuries from this fight? Because I thought you were slowing down, but maybe you broke a rib or something, that uh, uh, ankle sprain, no. anything of that sort? No, just my toes, man, trying to push the toes. He's kind of deflected a few off his elbows. My feet hurt a little bit, but no injuries, no ribs, man. I'm not. I'm not hurting at all, you know what I mean, from anything, really. I just, uh, you know, just my, I guess just my toes trying to keep him into the body a lot, him deflecting, deflecting. So no injuries, though, you know. I'm fully healthy. I was fully healthy going into the fight. And uh, just some minor bumps and bruises right now, I feel fully healthy as well. Can you also talk about the, uh, that soccer pick that you got, uh, 
during the fight. Did, did it hit you in the head or did it hit you in the chest? It, it was very hard to tell from my end. No, no. He, uh, I was still on the ground. You know, I was just credit to my athleticism, man. I should have just been getting up faster. Um, he went to the, he went to the head and I just blocked it. It didn't touch me in the head at all. It actually hit me in the forearms, but it was, uh, completely legal. I wasn't trying to tell the ref it was illegal. I was trying to tell him, you know, that that's what it was. The intention was had I not blocked it, you know, but because I did, it was a total legal kick. And, uh, that's why I wanted to presume, you know, like right away. All right, Jay. Patrick, I just wanted to ask a couple quick ones. First of all, you kind of touched on it, but this is the first time I believe you've gone the full 25 minutes. So how much did that factor into this? I've trained for 25 minutes. Of, like, I was a multiple time King of the Cage champion. So I've trained for 25 minutes before. Um, just going out there and getting the experience uh, was important for me too. Um, I fight like five to seven rounds in the gym every Tuesday, Thursday. So it wasn't no different. It didn't feel no different. Sorry, I don't know where I'm looking. It didn't feel no different from the gym though. You know, um, just some adjustments, man. I think I just kind of walked forward a little too hard, walked into too many shots, and uh, I didn't really respect his power. Even though he, he's knocked people out, I just, I don't get wobbled in the gym at all. So I don't, you know, I just kept walking. And are you looking for some time off now, or would you like to make a, a bit of a quick turnaround and try and get the uh, taste out of your mouth, so to speak? Um, whatever my coaches think, man, you know, um, I'm, I'm willing, you know, I'm healthy. I'm willing to get back into camp and keep fighting. You know, that's what I do anyway. So, um, I'd love to get the taste out of my mouth, but I also want to make the proper adjustments to uh, be back. You know, I'm not here just to be, you know, one of these guys in the middle of the pack. I want to be a world champion You know, I want to be at the top of the list. And, uh, I feel, you know, adjustments, I could finish that fight just as well as I feel like I could finish, you know, a lot of other people as well. So get back out there soon. It's on the win. Um, sitting up there with your belt, champion of the world. How does that feel? Uh, say that one more time. Champion of the world. One more time. <laughs> champion of the world. Oh, my God. The Reconquista is back, man. The fighting Spanish are here. Uh, we're known to conquer. And um, in there with Apache uh, Mix, a valent, valent uh, opponent, you know, I, he gave me all I could handle. And I gave him a lot more than he could handle. And I'm... I'm here, man. I'm here to stay. I'm here to uh, dominate and conquer the 135 division, uh, what, no matter who it is. And talk to me about the, you know, how the fight progressed. Was that kind of what you were expecting out of him? Obviously, uh, you both were, were throwing a lot on the feet, and it was, it was a pretty exciting fight. There's an old saying that people say, young, dumb, and full of cum. And that's what uh, Apache Mix was, you know. And uh, we knew he was going to go out there, blow his wad in the first round. And uh, it was like, okay, stay composed, uh, keep your calm. Uh, keep cool, keep collective. I'm the veteran. I've, I've been here before, and uh, this time I wasn't going to go go home without it. For sure, man. And uh, talk to me a little bit about your post-fight speech. Obviously, you, you know, you talked about where you came from and your people. Um, how important is it for you to represent them on the, the big stage? I think it's important for everyone, you know, to realize where they do come from. Uh, United States right now is struggling with who they are. We're the United States. We're united, and we all come from different places in this world. And, uh, I'm not afraid to show who I am. I'm not re afraid to represent who I am, and neither should they. This is what our platform's for, is to represent who you are, and don't forget who your ancestors are, whether good or bad. You have the decision to, to, to change that, and I'm here to change, change that on my family. You know, we, we came we, and we conquered, but we also civilized here with uh, my other side of my family, the, the, the natives, and, uh, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to be a United States, and I'm proud no matter what. And you also gave a big shout out to uh, your training partner, Cub Swanson, who was in your corner tonight. Can you just talk about that a little bit and, and how he's impacted your career? Yeah, man. Our team, uh, as you can see, is full of adversity. We got, you know, Cub Swanson. He should, he, he, there's, there's no greater role model to follow than Cub Swanson. He's been there. He should have had title fights. He should have had this, should have had that. And you know what? He never complained. He always shows up ready to fight and ready to perform in front of the fans. And when I had excuses because I lost my title fight, he said, buck up, be a man, own your loss, and go out there and keep fighting because that's why we fight. And so, you know, huge shout out to him. Huge shout out to TJ Dillashaw being able to keep me, to keep my composure, stay strong, stay training. Uh, we have battles, you know, me and him, 
if, if you see us in the gym, you think we're two Tasmanian devils, you know, with Cub in there, myself, uh, TJ, we go in there and we scrap every day. And you know what? We love each other, man. I was so emotional being able to hug them and be able to show them that our hard work had paid off. And, you know, there's a new, there's a, there's a new, new champion in town at the 135 division. And that's me across the world, across the board. One, uh, the body work throughout the fight was phenomenal, multi-punch combinations, all this stuff. Was that always a game plan going into the fight, play the long game, work the body, and you knew with your experience and his lack of experience and his step up in competition, it was going to be your fight three for four, fifth round? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, the whole game plan was dictated off Cub Swanson's fight with with Kron Gracie, mixed with my manager, Tiki. He's a great uh, uh, stand-up fighter, kickboxing, Muay Thai, and... We just worked on beating the angle on the southpaw. TJ Dillashaw adding the switch steps. And you've seen a little bit of everyone in my in my fighting style. Joe Daddy Stevenson, his grappling style. Paul Herrera, Daryl Christian, his wrestling. I mean, usually he dominates guys over in the under over. And uh, with Daryl Christian, uh, who used to work with a lot of guys out of San Diego, now works with us, uh, I was able to uh, um, nullify his, his, his clinch game. And that's all thanks to him. Even his takedowns, I was able to defend it, uh, being able to wrestle with guys at St. John Bosco and being able to outperform people. I'm a Purdue wrestler. I'm a Division One athlete. Like, and I had to go out there and act like it. A big star in the last in your fight with Patricia for the title was the last minute change where TJ was not in your corner. How big of a difference was it to have him in your corner for this title fight? Was it was it big? I mean, he's honestly a, a, a firecracker uh, for me. You know, he he's a guy that goes in there and lights the fuse for me and able to let me go out there and blow up, you know, let me go. When you, when you have a champion in your corner that's been there and that's uh, been walking through those steps, when you have veterans in your sport and people who corner, uh, who corner you that actually fought in the UFC, fought in MMA, fought in all these organizations, you have full belief in whatever they say and you're going to do whatever they say. They play me like a video game when I'm out there. They call something, I'll take a second, and the guy's like, Forget, and I seen him, oh, oh he's going to do this. And then he forgot I was going to do it. And then I, it's still stuck in my head. Then I do it and, and it plays well. So, you know, f full thanks to my corner. Uh, I wish I was able to have Joe Daddy Stevenson here, but, you know, unfortunately the commission, they only allowed me three corners. Congratulations, Juan. Thank Can I you. ask about that soccer kick uh, that you went for? Did, uh, when Justin Herzog stopped it, I saw you had some words of him. Can you talk about that whole, that whole, uh, well, if you see my fights with William Joplin and other fights, you know, and he's doing his job, like great job on the referee. Like I'm a guy that makes the referee do his job. Like if he, if he says it was illegal, I'm like, okay, but please rewatch it. Like I thought I got poked in my eye and he said, no, you got punched in the eye. I was like, okay, I thought it was a finger. I apologize. Uh, but you know, uh, William Joplin, same thing. As he came up, I threw a soccer kick and it landed and his hand was off the mat. And same thing with him. I, I, I throw it in practice just because I know in real life I'm going to throw it. And I don't throw it hard in practice, but it's practice. You know, perfect pra uh, practice makes perfect. And uh, with Bellator doing all these shows in Europe, uh, any chance you can convince Scott Coker to do a show oh, yeah. in Spain? That, that, was a, that was a whole um, reason getting this belt and uh, representing my people is to go out there in Spain, uh, put a performance on it from the king and queen, and go into the soccer field with all these soccer players. And if they could fill up a soccer uh, um, arena, we could fill up a fight venue. Big help from the internet, John. Hi, Juan. Congratulations on the win. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I want to know what was the mindset like in between uh, rounds two and three there? Obviously, you know, you were down two nothing on the scorecards there. Did you know that you had to step it up a bit or were you kind of planned that he was going to start to fade there and that you were going to start picking him apart in those rounds? Yeah, you know, you, he he's never really lost a round. And uh, the whole idea was, hey, just pick touch, touch and pick him apart. Of course, a couple of times I overswing and he took my back and he got some takedowns. But hey. We fight through adversity. We're fighters. Uh, you know, we're born with a gift, all of us, you know, whether it be journalism, whether it be construction worker. For me, it's fighting and performing, and it's going out there and making a big drama show, a uh, Triple G style, big drama show. And that's what I gave the uh, fans. Thanks, Juan. Appreciate it. Yep. Okay. Hey, Juan, congratulations on the win tonight. Have you thought much about what uh, being champ and holding the belt is going to be like now? Because you've been chasing this for a while. Now you're going to have the target on your back. Absolutely. TJ Dillashaw and Dwayne Ludwig, uh, before the uh, Patricio Pitbull fight, told me there's a responsibility being a champion. And uh, 
you know, they've, they've coached me through it and I know what's, what's ahead and I'm excited for the responsibility, the responsibility it takes to be a champion. Congrats again. Hi, um, congratulations on your victory. Um, as a new champion, you will possibly face the former champion, Kyoji Horiguchi in the future. I know you called him out once, but uh, what is your impression of him? And if the fight is materialized, which part of your game do you feel you should improve in to make sure to beat him? Horiguchi! I'm still coming for you, baby. Where you at? I hope you're ready, Horiguchi. I want that fight, baby. I want that risen bell. Let's go. Oh, that's awesome. And also, um, the partnership between Beato and Rising gives you another Japanese potential opponent uh, who is a current Rising Bantamweight champion, Kaya Sakura, who actually knocked out Horiguchi once. So tell me your impression of Sakura and uh, are you in interested in going to Japan and unifying the title, just like you know, Darian Caldwell tried to do? The DICE team and Scott Cooker and my manager, Tiki Gosen, is going to make it happen. Special shout out to the DICE team. Thank, thank you guys for the love and support. Uh, yes, it's going to happen. You will see me in Japan. It's going to be just like this. Uh, but first things first, uh, true champion defends his belt. And, uh, and uh, I, I'm a conquistador. I'm going to go out there. And I'm going to dominate the 135 division all around the world. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Shannon. Thank you, guys. Big shout out to myself.